Which of the following is the first step in preparing a patient for venipuncture? A. Apply a tourniquet. B. Identify the patient. C. Select the venipuncture site. D. Disinfect the area. Answer, B. Proper identification of the patient is critical to ensure the correct tests are performed for the right individual. What is the purpose of using a tourniquet during venipuncture? A. To disinfect the site. B. To locate the vein more easily. C. To prevent the patient from moving. D. To reduce pain during the procedure. Answer, B. A tourniquet helps enlarge veins by restricting blood flow, making them easier to locate for venipuncture. Which vein is most commonly used for venipuncture? A. Femoral vein. B. Great saphenous vein. C. Median cubital vein. D. Cephalic vein. Answer, C. The median cubital vein is most often used because of its accessibility and size, making it ideal for blood collection. In what situation would capillary blood collection be preferred over venipuncture? A. In patients with difficult veins. B. For blood cultures. C. For large volume blood collection. D. In patients with hemophilia. Answer, A. Capillary collection is used when venipuncture is difficult, such as in patients with fragile or hard-to-locate veins. What is the maximum recommended depth for a capillary puncture on an adult's fingertip? A. 1.5 mm. B. 2.0 mm. C. 2.4 mm. D. 3.0 mm. Answer, C. The depth for a capillary puncture should not exceed 2.4 mm to avoid bone injury and to ensure proper blood flow. What is the correct order of draw for collecting blood samples using multiple tubes? A. Red, green, lavender. B. Light blue, red, green. C. Lavender, red, light blue. D. Green, light blue, lavender. Answer, B. The correct order of draw prevents cross-contamination of additives between tubes. Which needle size is most commonly used for routine adult venipuncture? A. 16 gauge. B. 18 gauge. C. 21 gauge. D. 23 gauge. Answer, C. A 21 gauge needle is typically used for routine venipuncture as it is the right balance between size and comfort for blood collection. What is the most common complication after venipuncture? A. Infection. B. Hematoma. C. Thrombosis. D. Arteriospasm. Answer, B. Hematomas can occur if blood leaks from the vein into surrounding tissue, usually due to improper pressure application after the procedure. How long should pressure be applied to the venipuncture site after blood is drawn? A. 10 to 15 seconds. B. 30 to 60 seconds. C. 1 to 2 minutes. D. Until the bleeding stops. Answer, D. Pressure should be applied until bleeding stops to prevent the formation of a hematoma. Why is the first drop of blood wiped away during capillary blood collection? A. It contains more red blood cells. B. It contains tissue fluid. C. It has a lower glucose level. D. It contains more platelets. Answer, B. The first drop of blood is wiped away because it may be contaminated with tissue fluid, which can alter the results of the test. Which antiseptic is most commonly used to clean the venipuncture site? A. Hydrogen peroxide. B. Alcohol. C. Betadine. D. Chlorhexidine. Answer, B. Alcohol is the most commonly used antiseptic for venipuncture site preparation to prevent infection. How many times should a blood collection tube be inverted after drawing blood? A. 2 to 3 times. B. 4 to 5 times. C. 8 to 10 times. 
D. 12 to 15 times. Answer. C. Blood tubes should be inverted 8 to 10 times to ensure proper mixing of the blood with any additives present in the tube. What is the primary reason for rejecting a hemolyzed blood sample? A. Incorrect patient identification. B. Air contamination. C. Inaccurate test results. D. Excessive blood volume. Answer. C. Hemolysis can lead to inaccurate laboratory test results, which is why hemolyzed samples are often rejected. Which artery is most commonly used for arterial blood gas, ABG, collection? A. Brachial artery. B. Femoral artery. C. Radial artery. D. Dorsalis pedis artery. Answer. C. The radial artery is commonly used for ABG collection because of its accessibility and the presence of collateral circulation. Which of the following is a potential risk when performing a dermal puncture on an infant's heel? A. Hemolysis. B. Arteriospasm. C. Osteomyelitis. D. Petechiae. Answer. C. Osteomyelitis, a bone infection, is a potential risk when performing heel sticks in infants if the puncture is too deep. What is the most appropriate action if a patient has a seizure during venipuncture? A. Restrain the patient. B. Remove the needle and protect the patient. C. Continue with the procedure. D. Call security. Answer, B. If a patient has a seizure, the needle should be removed immediately, and the patient should be protected from injury. What is the primary purpose of the modified Allen test? A. To check blood pressure. B. To assess collateral circulation. C. To detect anemia. D. To monitor glucose levels. Answer, B. The modified Allen test is performed to ensure that there is adequate collateral circulation before drawing blood from the radial artery. Which of the following is considered a pre-analytical error in blood collection? A. Incorrect labeling of the specimen. B. Improper test result interpretation. C. Incorrect diagnostic conclusion. D. Inaccurate transcription of the report. Answer, A. Preanalytical errors occur before the analysis and include mistakes such as mislabeling or improper handling of the specimen. What gauge needle is typically used for pediatric venipuncture? A. 16 gauge. B. 21 gauge. C. 23 gauge. D. 25 gauge. Answer C. A 23-gauge needle is often used for pediatric venipuncture as it is smaller and causes less discomfort. How should a blood culture specimen be collected? A. Using an alcohol wipe only. B. Using a chlorhexidine or iodine solution. C. Using only a sterile needle and syringe. D. By performing a capillary collection. Answer, B. Blood culture collection requires a sterile technique using chlorhexidine or iodine to minimize contamination. What is the primary reason for using butterfly needles? A. To reduce the cost of blood collection. B. To access difficult or small veins. C. To collect large volumes of blood. D. To decrease the risk of hemolysis. Answer, B. Butterfly needles are used to access difficult or small veins, particularly in pediatric or elderly patients. What is the first action a phlebotomist should take if a patient begins to feel faint during venipuncture? A. Remove the needle and lower the patient's head. B. Continue with the procedure. C. Have the patient stand up. D. Call for help immediately. Answer, A. If a patient feels faint, the needle should be removed, and the patient's head should be lowered to increase blood flow to the brain. When drawing blood from a patient with an IV line, where should the blood be collected? A. Above the IV site. B. Below the IV site. C. From the same vein as the IV. 
D. From the hand on the same side as the IV. Answer, B. Blood should be drawn below the IV site to avoid contamination of the sample with IV fluids. Which of the following complications may arise if the tourniquet is left on for too long? A. Petechiae. B. Hemolysis. C. Hemoconcentration. D. All of the above. Answer, D. Leaving a tourniquet on for too long can cause petechiae, hemolysis, and hemoconcentration, which may affect the quality of the blood sample. How long should a patient fast before a fasting blood glucose test? A. 4 hours. B. 6 hours. C. 8 to 12 hours. D. 24 hours. Answer, C. Fasting for 8 to 12 hours is necessary for an accurate fasting blood glucose test result. Which of the following sites is acceptable for capillary blood collection in adults? A. Earlobe. B. Thumb. C. Fingertip. D. Heel. Answer, C. In adults, the fingertip of the middle or ring finger is commonly used for capillary blood collection. Which of the following tests can be affected by hemolysis? A. Complete blood count, CBC. B. Glucose test. C. Potassium test. D. Blood culture. Answer, C. Hemolysis can cause a false elevation in potassium levels, which may lead to inaccurate test results. What is the preferred site for venipuncture in an obese patient? A. Cephalic vein. B. Dorsal hand vein. C. Great saphenous vein. D. Radial artery. Answer, A. The cephalic vein is often more accessible in obese patients and is commonly used for venipuncture in this population. What action should be taken if the phlebotomist notices a patient has a bleeding disorder before performing venipuncture? A. Use a larger gauge needle. B. Apply a tighter tourniquet. C. Apply pressure for a longer period after the draw. D. Proceed with the procedure as usual. Answer, C. In patients with bleeding disorders, it is important to apply pressure for a longer period after the venipuncture to prevent excessive bleeding. Which of the following is not a reason to reject a blood sample? A. Hemolysis. B. Clotting in a serum sample. C. Incorrect labeling. D. Slightly delayed transport to the lab. Answer, D. Hemolysis, clotting, or incorrect labeling are valid reasons for sample rejection, while slight delays in transport may not necessarily affect sample integrity. What should be done if a phlebotomist accidentally punctures an artery during venipuncture? A. Continue the blood draw. B. Apply pressure and seek medical assistance. C. Ignore and proceed. D. Apply ice to the puncture site. Answer, B. If an artery is punctured, pressure should be applied immediately, and medical assistance should be sought to manage the situation. Which of the following can cause a blood sample to clot before testing? A. Using an EDTA tube. B. Delayed mixing of the blood with anticoagulant. C. Excessive tube inversion. D. Drawing blood too quickly. Answer, B. Delayed or inadequate mixing of the blood with the anticoagulant in the collection tube can result in clot formation. What is the correct action if blood flow stops after the first tube is drawn during a multi-tube collection? A. Discard the needle and restart the procedure. B. Reposition the needle slightly. C. Remove the tourniquet and reapply. D. Ask the patient to move their arm. Answer, B. If blood flow stops, the needle may need to be repositioned slightly to restore proper flow. Which of the following is a proper site for heel stick collection in a newborn? A. Center of the heel. B. Outer edge of the heel. C. The big toe. D. The calf. Answer, B. 
The outer edge of the heel is the preferred site for a heel stick to avoid injury to the bone. What is the most common cause of vein collapse during venipuncture? A. Using a small gauge needle. B. Using a large gauge needle. C. Applying excessive pressure. D. Using too much suction when drawing. Answer, D. Excessive suction from the vacuum of the collection tube can cause fragile veins to collapse during venipuncture. Which of the following precautions is necessary when drawing blood from a patient on anticoagulant therapy? A. Use a larger gauge needle. B. Apply pressure for an extended period after the draw. C. Use a butterfly needle. D. Avoid venipuncture altogether. Answer, B. Patients on anticoagulant therapy are at higher risk of bleeding, so additional pressure should be applied to ensure proper clotting. Which of the following should not be used for venipuncture in patients with severe burns? A. Hand veins. B. Anticubital veins. C. Saphenous veins. D. Scalp veins. Answer, B. Burn patients may have damaged skin at traditional venipuncture sites, so alternative sites such as hand or scalp veins may need to be used. Which of the following errors could result in a false high potassium level? A. Using a 25-gauge needle. B. Not applying a tourniquet. C. Delayed transport of the sample. D. Hemolysis of the sample. Answer, D. Hemolysis releases intracellular potassium into the plasma, causing falsely elevated potassium levels. What is the most appropriate action if a patient refuses to allow a phlebotomist to draw blood? A. Explain the importance of the test and ask again. B. Ignore the refusal and proceed. C. Call security to assist. D. Document the refusal and notify the healthcare provider. Answer, D. The patient's refusal should be documented, and the healthcare provider must be informed to determine the next steps. What should you do if a patient has an allergic reaction to the antiseptic used for cleaning the venipuncture site? A. Apply more antiseptic. B. Use soap and water instead. C. Wipe off the antiseptic immediately and apply an alternative. D. Continue with the procedure as normal. Answer, C. If a patient shows signs of an allergic reaction, the antiseptic should be wiped off immediately, and an alternative should be used.